You know, Arizona State, I think they, um, they've had about 11 games now uh, that have looked just like that, and, and they're, they're tough to play against with their style of play, but I thought the first half – uh, we were terrific at the defensive end of the floor. This team really responded to the challenges of the last couple of days because they've had some tough, tough practices where they've taken just tons of charges, loose balls. They've been very physical, and they've really kind of got their sense of urgency back at that end of the floor. And yet then you come out in the second half, and, and I thought the difference in the game the second half was we just turned the ball over a little bit too much at the beginning of the game. Defensively, I thought we were still pretty good. Uh, we just need to take care of that ball a little bit better. Uh, it was nice to see Tawan Porter get back on his game and, and shoot the basketball, and he got into a great rhythm and had that smile back on his face. It was nice to see Chamberlain Oguchi start to defend and get a good feeling about himself. He had a couple buckets as well, too. So uh, I just have a, a good feeling that we're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm, and it's sort of nice to be able to do that here at home. I just told this team that um, – when you look across the country at the different conferences and you talk about those teams that are in the top 30 and top 40, uh, those programs that halt, that benchmark win is number 20. And, and that is a huge, I don't care if it's a, a, an ugly game or a great game or whatever, that's 20 wins. And I think there's probably only about a dozen teams in the country right now that have 20 wins. So that's a huge milestone for us. Uh, this program, I think when you look at all of our numbers, has averaged about 20 wins the last 10 years. And, and, but to get it this early and to get it this way with this group of everything they went through, uh, that's a tribute to them and, and, and just how tough they've hung in there with us and everything. Uh, the next step for them is to continue to climb in this conference. Uh, obviously, the game on Saturday is going to be big for us to get us to nine wins, and then you're going to look forward after that to get to ten wins. So it's just a, a step-by-step climb right now as we close out the year, and it's just nice to get back home. The crowd was great, and we're expecting another great environment on Saturday, and then we'll play better come Saturday when we get our feet underneath us and just get going again. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Don't pause too long. <laughs> Well, it, it's certainly something we're going to be able to, to sell in recruiting because I, I don't know where, where Bryce is. I thought coming in the year, Bryce and Chamberlain, they talked about the potentially having four guys. Obviously, before their career is over, you could possibly have four, I think, with 1,000 points. So to be able to go on the road and, and talk about this because we've sold this program in terms of a lot of freedom. If you're a skilled player, this is a great system to play in because you get a lot of opportunities to score and make basketball decisions, basketball plays. And to see Aaron Brooks there, see Malik there, Tuan Porter will definitely be there before it's all said. And I think Bryce Taylor has a great opportunity in Chamberlain, too, before their careers are done. Seem more, I mean, a relief to struggle all night? I, I was nervous for the last couple of days with the game because you just, um, you know, this year we've played so well and we've had so much success, and you go on the road and you win one out of four. Uh, not that it puts any doubts in your mind because y you played well, you lost to some pretty good teams, and I watched that game last night and, and saw how those two teams play, and I said, you know, they did not play that way when they played us. We, we got their A games when they played us, and yet uh, I was a little bit nervous just because of getting back home and, and getting going again, and you look at the ticker on ESPN, and it shows Oregon and Arizona State, Oregon's lost three out of four after winning five, and that stuff kind of plays you a little bit, but it was just nice to get going again. So it, it makes you nervous, and it's good to get it out of the way because they're a tough basketball team to play with their style of play. They'll be a tough team in the tournament to play against uh, in the conference tournament and everything. And he's done a good job with them to keep their attitudes and keep them fighting uh, through this tough year for them. At, at the end of the first half, you had Aaron out with foul trouble over about the last four minutes and kind of the group that looked like could be next year's five out there. I mean, just your thoughts about that and, and how those guys played. I've really been after TP uh, the last – three or four days that probably made practice a little bit miserable for him for freshmen and everything. And I, and I told him today, I'm not coaching him for this year. I'm, I'm coaching him for next year when we don't have Aaron Brooks. And he needs to understand the leadership he has to have and, and he has to show on defense and offense. And I, again, I just thought he responded well. He did not hurt us at all defensively. In fact, he had some great plays on the defensive end of the floor. So that group was a good group to have out there because they controlled the game. They shot it well. They ran our offense well. They defended well. And we came down in the locker room, uh, I thought, in really good shape. And that group had a lot to do with it. Can you just that tough? Yes. 
Yes, he is a very, very good basketball player. As a freshman, he was an automatic scorer as a big guy, long, could rebound, and we saw him as a freshman, so he's going to be a great player in this conference, and he really is. He's, he's the number one offensive rebounder in the conference, and he's just a load. He's active, he's athletic, he's long, and if you don't get a body, sometimes you get a body on him, he still goes over the top of you and grabs rebounds, and he's, he's a tough matchup to keep off the boards. No, because again, each game again takes on a, a different, you know, feel and a different look. You got to realize last last week against SC, we had 23 offensive rebounds, but they play four guards like us. So against Arizona, uh, Arizona is going to spread out more with you. They won't be as packed in uh, on on the uh, defensive end. They're not going to grind it as much. They'll shoot more threes. There'll be longer rebounds. It'll be a different kind of a game on Saturday. So. You know, we're at 20 wins, and we've talked about being concerned with our size and all that thing all year long, and yet we're at, we're at 20 wins. So not really, and there's some adjustments we can make if it gets to be too much of a problem. But so far, I really haven't really worried about our, our rebound is kind of taking care of itself because it still comes back to blocking out. And they'll see tomorrow that we missed some blockouts and just tried to rebound the ball. And with that small of a team, you've got to get a body on Surge and Morrow and Pendergraft. You're not going to just turn and rebound. So it just becomes a teaching time in preparation for Saturday's game. Well, again, you, you talk about Marty Lunen guarding a, a big stud like that, and he did a great job of fronting him. And there's a couple times we switched, and Bryce Taylor had him, or Malik had him. And one time, TP had him late in the game where we switched, and he was down there fronting him, and they, they couldn't find him down there. So, again, uh, I, I thought we did a real good job on him. And they're, they're not a great scoring team. Uh, Gasher, Glasser had a great game. He shot the ball very, very well. But the last four or five possessions, we did everything right in the game. Our defense was really good. We switched. We made them take tough shots, and they hit some, a couple of wild threes and a couple of tough threes down the stretch. But we did everything right on the defensive end of the floor, even with Tawan Porter on the floor. <clears throat> You know, uh, when you talk about um, comfortable win and everything, I, I'd rather have what's for all of you uncomfortable wins versus which are uncomfortable losses for me last year that we had. And we had enough of them that these are not uncomfortable wins. I mean, you're, you're winning games. It's a matter of you just get a chance. They're almost like NBA games. And at that level, it's all about chess match, and it all comes down to the last two or three minutes of the game, and you make the right decisions, and you win the game. It's kind of the same thing. And if, you, if you're in it long enough, it's just a matter of playing all the way through the horn. The game is never over, whether you're ahead or not. Two or three, doesn't matter. Yeah, it'd be great to blow someone out, but at the same time, I think this is great preparation for them. I mean, they, they don't even realize it, just like they didn't realize last year what preparation was to go through that adversity they went through. That's the thing. They've, they've got them in position this year to close out these games, having all those close games they went through and lost. Now they're winning those close games. So as long as we win, I don't know. I don't see anybody on our schedule right now that you can say we're going to blow that team out and have a 15, 20 point win. It's just not going to be like that. So, you know, buckle them up, strap them on, hang in there with us. And let's just grind through it and get another win and keep plugging on through.